What's up, everybody? Claymore back with another one of his awesome takes. And I want to talk about what thing, what thing, what may be coming up here in week two and what may be going on forward for the NFL. I'm sure you guys have seen that this situation with the Pittsburgh Steelers is starting to become a mess. Now, in my previous video, I spoke about how Alejandro Villanueva did the right thing. I still believe that to this day. And I know a lot of people are saying, well, it's a team decision. I've gotten a lot of comments on this. That's okay. I mean, I'm, I'm cool with comments. I'm always willing to engage with those who comment on my, on my posts. Well, the situation with Marquise Pouncey is apparently the long and short of it is this here. Pouncey looked at the situation and said, you know what? We're honoring a guy who could be a criminal. Really quick, Antoine Rose's situation is this here. He was 17 years old. He could have gotten hung up with the wrong people. Apparently, he was in a drive-by shooting. The guy, the, the guy was shot. Cops chased him down. Eventually, they caught up with the vehicle. Rose was in there. He took off running. I'm guessing he was probably scared. A lot of people dispute whether he actually did the crime or not. However, they did find guns. They did find the gun residue and everything on his hands to suggest. Now, obviously, that'd be like a nitrate test. If it's on his hands, chances are he probably pulled the trigger. Rose was shot. Eventually, they went to trial. The cop went to trial. They threw the book at him. The cop got off. Eventually, the family settled for $2 million outside of court in a lawsuit against the Pittsburgh Police Department. But apparently what happened was that Marquise Pouncey, he's a football player who backs the blue, and also a guy who does some actual community outreach with the police, not just in Pittsburgh, but in Florida too, where he lives at in the offseason. So he looked at the situation, he did some more research, and he said, you know what, I'm not going to honor this kid either. All right, now... The situation's kind of hairy, but I mentioned in my previous video that I had a feeling something else was going on here, and I still do. And I think it's a much, much bigger, much, much bigger, broader spectrum, much, much more bigger scope of what's actually going on. As you guys can probably tell, I'm taking a little bit more sober tone tonight. Let's take a look at exactly what the news in Pittsburgh had to say. Let's go ahead and roll this. About the decision to have Antoine Rose Jr.'s name on the back of the team's helmets Monday night. Pouncey says he was given limited information regarding Rose's case and was unaware of the full story, adding moving forward he will make his own decision on what he will display on the back of his helmet. Pouncey went on to say in the post he is against racism and believes the best thing he can do is to continue helping repair relationships between police and their communities. As you guys can see, Pouncey basically made his own decision. He got the facts, which is something I think everyone should do. He made his own decision. He chose not to honor the guy anymore. I don't blame him. I wouldn't either. Now, what's really interesting, though, is that we're finding out, and I may have said this in the first part or not, but we're now finding out that the decision to honor Antoine Rose Jr. came from the top. Don't be surprised if all the NFL owners – have been told by Roger Goodell, look, we need to sponsor this initiative. We need to do this in racism initiative. Look, I'm all about ending racism, okay? Some guys are going to comment and say you were racist, this, that, and that. But truth be told is, man, the word doesn't even have any more meaning anymore. It really doesn't, man, because it gets thrown around too much. I would like to have racism ended too. But at the same time, though, this is not the proper forum to go out there and protest the national anthem, to go out there and just turn off your fan base. Like I've said many times, we don't like getting lectured. And we do love our sports and we do love our players. We just don't love our players when they lecture us and try to tell us some stupid stuff. All right? And especially if they try to make things too political. Now, I don't know if you guys have noticed, now I'm taking a much more somber approach about this. The reason why is I've had some time to sit back and process it. I think everybody should do the same thing too. But once again, you know, we're talking about a go woke, go broke campaign, and it's only going to end in disaster. Somebody mentioned the other day that the NFL ratings are still number one. Well, it's number one, but you got a lot less viewers. Matter of fact, a lot of people have just said to hell with sports in general. Look at the NBA's ratings. I've done at least one or two videos on that there alone. I'll be doing one on the NBA again this week, probably on Tuesday. But as you can see, the players, I don't think, and I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys who watch this are going to say, look, man, the players are obviously not that informed on this. There's also more pieces out there I chose not to throw in this video, but they're all over the place about the Pittsburgh Steelers players just saying, look, man, we're just, we just don't want to do this anymore. These decisions are coming from the top. Don't be surprised if you find out that not only this week was it the Steelers who did this. I mean, why don't you find out two weeks from now that maybe the Browns chose not to do this anymore? I mean, the other night they really didn't protest. I didn't really watch the game. I found out about the next morning that they were not really protesting. I could believe that. 
I mean, I don't know, but you know. But still though, don't be surprised, like I said before, that you could see later on down the line that this whole thing is being done by the owners. Now, some players are obviously involved. The bigger name guys are gonna be used to push this narrative out there. But don't be surprised if it ain't Roger Goodell himself saying, look, dude, we need to honor this. We need to jump on this as a money-making scheme. That's really and truly what this whole thing is. It's a money-making scheme. I mean, a lot of times these guys will tell you something like, yeah, we need to end racism and, you know, we need to end all this bigotry and go vote and yada, yada, yada. A lot of times it's really just an attempt to make money. It's all about the almighty dollar. You see, if they wanted to end racism, they would actually physically go out in the neighborhoods and stuff and actually try to end racism, try to, you know, actually talk and whatnot. There are some teams that are actually having these lectures, but, dude, they're having them in the locker room. They're not having them out there with the fans or anything. So they're not really doing anything. Go woke, go broke is nothing more than just a bunch of crap, in my opinion. Wokeness is nothing but just great giant lies, all it is. And the NFL is pushing it, and this is why the fans are turned off. Now, yes, people are still watching it. Yes, it's still ranked number one as far as viewership, but... There's not as many viewers, and they haven't been for a while. However, the situation with Marquise Pouncey is actually quite encouraging to me. I've told you guys before who watch my videos that I do love sports. I've been in it my entire life, but I love my country a lot more, okay? And I don't like being lectured about something I already know about. I don't like being lied to, and I don't like disinformation. This whole thing is going to blow up in their face. And like I said, I think the last two videos I did on this topic, I think I, I mentioned that at some point in time, Roger Goodell is going to have to crawl back to the fans. He's going to have to. When you notice the overall NFL merchandising, the overall numbers, the revenue is down, you're going to find out pretty quick that the people that were buying your gear, they were buying it for their kids, they're not buying it anymore because you're shoveling a bunch of crap in their face and they're not going to be interested in it. Let's take a. I mean, let's just just look around for a second. I mean, what is BLM really doing? When George Floyd got killed, and uh, nobody, by the way, nobody was for George Floyd getting killed. Everybody thought that that was wrong. All right. More information just came out about that. I'm not gonna report on that, even though you're kind of finding out a little bit more about what really happened there. But nobody wanted that to happen to George Floyd. Everybody thought it was egregious. Even pro-law enforcement people thought that was egregious. So what happens? BLM shows up, they protest, next thing you know, Antifa hijacks the protest. They hijack the protest, it turns into riots. Next thing you know, it spills over, and the riots are going on all across the country. We had riots right here down the road from where I live. See, I live in North Carolina, but right down the road in Raleigh, we had riots out there, and our sorry-ass governor, Roy Cooper, went out there and marched with them. I mean, not exactly a good message, Roy. Come on. This right here led to BLM having a spike in their approval rating up 25%. Now it's down to 12, and some states it's below zero, Wisconsin especially. I'll do a piece later on that there at a later date, especially when it comes to my team, the Packers, because I think if they continue to, to do what they're doing, they're going to be on the wrong side of history. But you see what I'm saying? Nobody, everybody loves a peaceful protest, but nobody likes riots. Nobody likes chaos. Nobody likes people beating people up. And nobody wants to honor and glorify criminals. And like I said before, Antoine Rose could have been a good kid for all I know who just got caught up with the wrong amount of people. But that's life, dude. Circumstances happen. And the more and more and more information that comes out, especially from Micah Fitzpatrick, from Marcus Pouncey, and Marquise Pouncey, and other players, you're finding out more and more and more that the owners are pushing this, they're pushing the players to do it. Now, I don't doubt the players' involvement to a certain extent, but for the most part, it looks to me like this is all ownership and all corporate. And I believe that is what's going to happen. Like I said, they're doing all this. They're trying to sell all this for the almighty dollar. At the end of the day, however, though, fans always catch on to that, and they always notice it. Guys, that's Claymore. If you like my content, guys, please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Please share this content. I should be having a video out roughly about every 48 to every 72 hours to talk about the issues going on in sports. I'm cutting it down to that there because I'm a lot busier nowadays. But uh, the next piece I'm going to do is probably going to be on LeBron James and how I think it's funny that he's crying about not winning the MVP award again. But I'll have a video out when I get a little more facts. I want to see exactly what kind of stupid crap these guys have to cover up for them. So I'll have that out there real soon. I'll talk to you guys later. I'll see you guys later. Have a good night. And you guys stay safe. Talk to you later.